welcome to Spilling Studio. My name is Sam, and this week we have a few ARE questions designed to help you pass your next exam. I've changed up the layout and colors this week to liven things up, so I hope you enjoy it. We have one question per exam and a bonus question at the end, so stick around. First up is practice management. In which of the following scenarios could a claim be filed for a lack of standard of care? An architect uses clay brick for the exterior skin instead of stucco. An architect specifies flooring felt with asbestos. An architect specifies vinyl flooring with asbestos. Mechanical and architectural drawings show a duct in different locations. Feel free to pause here to answer. The answer is an architect specifies flooring felt with asbestos. So we're starting out with a tricky one this week. For this question, you need to know what the standard of care is and what products the EPA still allows asbestos in. So this one is a double whammy. Standard of care for an architect is what a reasonably prudent architect would do in the same locale, in the same time frame, given the same facts or circumstances. This statement can be found in AIA document B101. I've linked a sample PDF below if you'd like to flip through it. Using a different material like stucco instead of brick does not necessarily indicate a violation of standard of care. Lack of coordination like a misplaced duct is not a violation of standard of care. The existence of minor inconsistencies within project documents does not mean the architect has failed to meet the standard of care. We are human and we do make mistakes. The standard of care does not require perfection from the architect or its subconsultants. The standard of care does require that architects throughout the country have knowledge of acceptable and questionable materials. Asbestos is still used in many building materials today. However, they must meet acceptable levels as defined by the EPA. One of these products is vinyl flooring. However, the use of asbestos in flooring felt is strictly prohibited by the EPA and should not be specified by an architect. I've put a link in the description to EPA's website talking about um, asbestos and different material products and what kind of hazardous materials are allowed in certain things if you want to go read through that. Next up is project management. According to the Gantt chart below, which of the following phases will take the longest to complete? Programming, schematic design, design development, or construction documents? Pause here to answer. The answer is construction documents. Programming, schematic design, and design development will each take one month. Construction documents will take the longest at two months. Obviously, this is not a realistic schedule for the design of an office building, but it is similar to a layout of what you might see on the exam. Make sure you double check the time periods of the schedule when you're testing. These may be in years, months, or weeks, so don't let that trip you up. Now on to programming and analysis. Which of the following represents the leeward side of the hill in the diagram below? A, B, C, or D? Pause here to answer. And the answer is D. The leeward side is the furthest from the wind direction, okay? Make sure when you have questions asking about wind that you're looking at where the wind is coming from. That one, that's important. The side that the wind is on, the closest to the wind direction, is your windward side. Off of the ocean is where you have your prevailing winds. Our question for project planning is, which of the following are passive systems? Check all that apply. Direct gain, trome wall, solar water heating, roof pond. Pause to answer. And the answer is direct gain, trome wall, and roof pond. 
Solar hot water heating is an active system. This system includes a solar collector, a storage tank, and a pump to move the fluid. Solar water heating can be used directly by the heated water for faucets or showers, or indirectly by using the heated piping to warm the air or water in a separate storage tank. Direct gain systems store heat in a high thermal mass material by collecting heat through southern glass. An example of this is the trome wall. Trome walls collect heat through glass and store the heat in a wall of high thermal material. This could be concrete, masonry, or water. The wall is located closely to the glass with vents at the top and bottom to allow air to circulate between the wall and the glass. Roof ponds use large bags of water to store heat on the roof of the building. The bags collect heat during the day and release heat downward to the building at night. I post new questions every week, so please hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on a video. Now on to project development. A local college is kicking off a master planning project that includes the construction of five buildings. The college would like a mechanical system that has the ability to expand in the future, connects to all five buildings, is energy efficient, and is easy to maintain. What type of mechanical system should be used? Local system, centralized system, or district system? Pause to answer. The correct answer is district system. A district system includes a central plant where heating and cooling energy are generated and distributed. This central plant houses equipment such as boilers, chillers, heat exchangers, and pumps. This system is commonly used in urban areas and large campuses. District systems optimize energy use, reduce energy costs, have the ability to connect to future buildings, and are easier to maintain as compared to local systems since system components are located in one place. Since this question asks about servicing five buildings, centralized and local systems are not the best options. Local systems only serve one room or zone and are more difficult to maintain for this reason. Centralized systems are cost-effective in large buildings and can be expanded relatively easily. However, it is not the best option for servicing five buildings. Next up is construction evaluation. An architect receives a shop drawing of millwork for a project currently under construction. How should the architect proceed? Check all that apply. Review installation procedures, select material color, verify quantities, review for conformance with design intent, review measurements. Pause here to answer. The answer is select material color and review for conformance with design intent. The architect is only required to review submittals for conformance with the design intent. The architect's submittal review does not represent nor make the architect responsible for reviewing installation procedures, verifying quantities, checking measurements, or completeness of details. If a decision on color or finish is required, the contractor must provide the full range of manufacturer's options for the architect to make a selection. Many times the contractor is also required to submit a physical sample for the architect to review. Now on to our bonus question. An owner has hired an architect to design their dream home. The owner does not have a defined vision and has multiple different design types they'd like to explore. This will require the architect to create multiple design variations for review. Which of the following compensation types will ensure the architect is fairly compensated for the time spent on this project? Stipulated sum, cost plus fee, construction cost percentage, unit cost, or fixed fee? Pause to answer. The correct answer is cost plus fee. Cost plus fee is exactly how it sounds. It compensates the architect for time spent on the project, including expenses for salaries, benefits, and office overhead, and a predetermined profit percentage. 
This method promotes transparency with the owner and allows for control and potential cost savings for the owner. In this scenario, the owner does not have defined project requirements. Using the cost plus fee allows the architect to create multiple designs without the risk of working past the fee. The owner will be informed of the project cost throughout and is able to end the design charrette if the costs begin to reach the owner's allocated funds for this phase. With the stipulated sum or fixed fee method, the architect agrees to provide a specific set of services for a predetermined fixed fee. This fee is typically based on factors such as the project's complexity, size, scope, and expected level of effort by the architect. Since the owner does not have a defined project scope, this would not be the best option. The construction cost percentage method bases the architect's compensation on a set percentage of construction costs of the project. If during construction, the cost of the work increases or decreases due to change orders, then the architect's fee is adjusted in proportion to that change. This method is not typically used today since it incentivizes architects to keep construction costs high and a small project that costs less may require the same amount of effort from the architect as a larger, more expensive project. As I mentioned before, since the owner doesn't have a defined project scope, this would not be the best option. Without a defined scope, construction costs cannot be estimated and it does not take into account the early design works of multiple charrettes. The unit cost compensation method is based on a definable unit associated with the project or deliverable. This could be per house in a neighborhood development or per room in a hotel or a hospital. This method is best used for projects with repetition. Since this project is only one house with varying program, this would not be the best compensation option. That's our questions for this week. Remember to check out in the description for links to some of the AIA contracts covered in this video. I've also linked some of my favorite study books, so go check those out. Let me know in the comments what subject areas you're struggling with and I'll do my best to cover it in the next video. Thank you all for joining. Please subscribe and good luck on your next exam. You got this.